Hey guys, thanks for joining Family Shenanigans Art Crafts and Build. Today we are working on this checkers board, all done up in blue in honor of my son, and we are really excited about it. The kids are loving it already, and we hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please think about giving us a like, a share, or hit that subscribe button, and we hope you enjoy. So since this board was more for my son, he likes the color blue. So we wanted to go with this soft blue. And this is the I Love This Yarn that we picked up at our local craft store. And then we picked navy as well. And then for like the pumpkins, we used the soft blue and then royal. So today we're going to be using the 22 key machine. And we're just starting out here with our salvage yarn. We're going to go in front of the black key, then behind, then in front, and then we're just going to continue that pattern of in front, behind, in front, behind, and all the way around. And um, we're going to be going about five rows with the salvage yarn because we're going to be sewing the ends um, as well as we did. I don't know if you guys saw our three in the row pumpkin video. Um, it's kind of like the same concept. And here we kind of went over at the five, a little bit over with the black keys. Every once in a while we make a mistake and that's okay. All we have to do is realign the thread there and then make sure it went through both black keys and we're not tying down these, this beginning one. And we're gonna be going about 20 rows with this navy yarn. And so if we have 20 rows of the navy yarn and we have five rows of salvage yarn, then we're gonna change the thread at row 25. Okay, and so we're just gonna go ahead and cut this navy yarn here and add this soft blue. And since this is inside the swath, we're gonna go ahead and tie a knot so that these are connected together. And I usually like to tie three knots and then since um, we started off with five salvage rows, 20 navy rows, now we're gonna add another 20 soft blue rows. So we will be going to the 45 row and then we'll change out again. So at this 45 row here, we're gonna go ahead and change from the soft blue back to the navy. And again, we are definitely going to knot these together because again, they're inside the swath. So I like to do three knots. And then now um, we have gone five salvage rows, 20 navy rows and 20 soft blue. So now we're gonna go another 20 navy rows. So we're gonna be stopping to change our thread again at row 65 this time. And you're probably starting to notice a pattern is developing because between each each section, we are going 20 rows. And though um, we always have to remember as you're making the swath that there was five rows of salvage yarn. So however many rows of salvage yarn you end up putting on yours, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to remember that each section needs to remain 20 and it needs to have the number be consistent throughout the piece. Now that we're at row 65, we're gonna go ahead and remove this navy and we're gonna add the soft blue back. And again, we're going to tie it in a knot because this is inside the swath still. So we've gone now five rows of salvage yarn, 20 rows of navy, 20 uh, rows of soft blue, another 20 rows of navy and now we're going to go another 20 rows of the soft blue and here you can see um, my swath is getting really low to the bottom so i'm just going to fluff it up and um, kind of set it in the center here and then now we are going to be going until row 85. And now at this row 85 we're just going to go ahead and change back into our navy color and um, we are going to, again, it's inside the swath. We're going to go ahead and tie a knot to it. And I just want to say during this time, um, the swath is getting bigger. So we want to keep just like rolling it down 
Um, that way it doesn't get caught on the table. And as you get further along in the piece, you want to go a little slower here at the beginning to make sure there's no mistakes when you're changing the different threads. And then now we've gone five salvage rows, 20 navy, 20 soft blue, 20 navy again, and another 20 soft blue. So we will be going another 20 navy. So we will be going to the 105 mark this time. Now that we're at the 105 row mark, we're gonna go ahead and change back to our soft blue. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we knot this together as well, because again, it's inside the swath. And then we, were, we are gonna add on another 20 rows. So we want the soft blue here that we're adding on to go another 20 rows. So we'll be going to row 125. And now at this row 125, we're just gonna change back to our navy. And again, we're gonna be, we wanna go another section, so it'll be another 20 rows. So we'll, we will be continuing until row 145. And apparently I can't talk as well today, so. <laughs> but we're just gonna continue on, and this is pretty much our last navy that we're gonna be doing, and then we'll finish off with the soft blue. And now that we're at this row 145, we're just gonna go ahead and add this soft blue. And now we have done four, we've done five rows of salvage yarn, four sections of the navy, 20 each. And we've done three sections already of the soft blue, 20 each. And so now we're gonna do another 20 sections of the soft blue. And that will give us a total of 165. And then when we hit the 165 mark, we're gonna add in another five rows of the salvage. And we'll show you how we do that as well. Now that we've gone 165 rows, we are almost done. We are gonna be changing back to our salvage yarn. And this time we are not tying a knot because we do not want the salvage yarn um, connected permanently because we later on when we sew it we're going to cut it away and I actually didn't leave a long enough tail it's better to leave a longer tail here for sewing um, and also my machine was catching a little with the salvage yarn but like I don't really pay as much attention to these rows because really the salvage yarn is just holding the yarn in place until I sew it together. So I don't really, I mean, you should do your best, but I don't care if it's perfect or not. And then um, when we, when I've done five salvage rows, I'm just going to go ahead and just run the machine until it untangles itself. And then this is our swath here. And so we have four sections of the light blue, 20 each rows, and four sections of the navy blue. And that's 20 rows of the navy blue as well. And this is our sections, and we are gonna make eight of these swaths. You need eight swaths all together. So you need seven more from the one we just made. And now that we have all of our H swaths made, I'm just kind of show you how we lay them out. Um, since it's an even number, they will be laid out so that like one side will start with the navy and end with the light blue or the soft blue. And then you will do the next one, the soft blue, and then the navy at the end. So you can see how they kind of um, rotate back and forth. And this is kind of what it looks like. And then we'll show you how we're gonna go ahead and put these all together and sew them. And all these ends are sewn the same way. All you do is you start where the string from the, the row where we cast on is, and you find these first stitches here, and then you pull through that first string, that first navy string. And then you go across and you find a stitch on the one side here closest to myself and then directly across from that I look for the next stitch that's directly across and I grab that stitch 
sometimes it's a little bit tighter than others. And then I'm using that same um, salvage yarn string that we began with. And then I go into the next one here closest to me and then I go directly across and then I pull through the three stitches for a slip stitch and then I come here, grab another stitch, pull through slip stitch. And I continue that pattern all the way to the end. And it's pretty easy and that's how both sides of each swath are done. And then sometimes at the very end, if you don't do the stitches exactly right, you might have like one left over. And I just go ahead and add an extra slip stitch. So even if it doesn't come out perfect, it usually comes out pretty decent and you can just do it. And these are my last two stitches here. And I'm just gonna go through them. And then this time I'm just gonna pull the string all the way through. And that's how I sew up the ends. And then I just cut the salvage yarn away. I know some people like to unravel it, but sometimes it gets caught and it's annoying and messy. And so I just prefer to go ahead and cut the salvage yarn away. And it takes a little effort, but... And then after I finish showing all my ends in, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I sew the pieces together. Okay, and I'm just going to grab one little stitch here in a row from the one side, and then I'm going to go directly to the other side and grab a stitch. And then I'm just going to take my yarn here, and I'm going to pull through and do a slip stitch and I want to keep my yarn in front of me here and then I'm just going to go in the same row on the light blue side grab the stitch and then go over to the navy and grab a stitch and then I'm going to pull through and just be careful I'm having a little problem I kind of pulled my yarn a little bit too far <clears throat> on the back there and then now I'm just going to go ahead on the one side, grab a stitch, and I'm going in from the top here on both sides. So you always remember to go in from the top. Grab it in by going in through the top here, and then going over here through the top and grab a stitch, and then pull through slip stitch. And then I'm just going to continue this pattern all the way along, and... Um, it's pretty simple. This part takes a little bit of time to do, but it's worth the effort. I just want to mention, because I forgot earlier, that I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook. And now we're going to go ahead and using the 22 key machine, make a pumpkin. We're going to put it, the string in front of the first black hook, then behind, then in front, and then behind, and then front. And we're just going to weave back and forth until we fully cast on. And you should always end with it behind the last white key there. And we are going to be going to the 23 row. And then we're going to go ahead and bind off when we get to the 23 3rd row. And you can see we're at 23 now. And um, the binding off will make 24 rows total. So... That's why we stop at the 23 and then we're just going to go ahead and thread the needle here. And if you've never um, bound off with the machine before, you just go in, you pick up a stitch, pull it through, go back in, pick up a stitch, pull it through. And then you just continue the same process all the way around until you're done. And then we'll show you how we put this all together to make the little pumpkins. To sew our pumpkins, we're just gonna go ahead and take one of the sides and like pull it tight. And then I'm just gonna take my needle in the top and grab a few stitches here. And then I'm just gonna go back in and continue pretty much all the way around. I'm just grabbing a few stitches. Oops, I lost my thread here. but I'm just gonna continue to sew, pick up a few stitches and then sew all the way around. And this is helping to pull this end tighter and kind of seal it closed. So, 
And I usually kind of do about two passes because the first one just kind of like pulls it tight and then the second pass through basically kind of sets it more in place. And then <clears throat> I'm not going to be cutting off my string when I'm done because I like to leave the string just in case when I'm doing the little gore hump parts that make sure that I have enough string to do that portion. So I like to just keep my string until the end. And I just wanted to show this batting that we're using because I just love it. It works really good with the pumpkins and it has a great soft texture. And just, I totally rec, I'm not getting paid for this or anything, but I, I love it. And I just want to say too, that when you're filling the pumpkins, if you're not going to double the swaths like we do in some of our other, other videos, um, it's important not to overfill the pumpkin sack. And once the sack is all stuffed, I like to go ahead and pick up a few stitches and kind of close it the same way I did the bottom. This time, I just kind of want to make it secure enough that I know it's not going to come apart once I move on to making the side pieces. And we really hope that you guys are enjoying this video so far, and we hope you enjoy this project. Um, we are super excited about it. The kids are excited. They have been looking forward to this one and sharing it with you all. And we hope that if you do enjoy it, that you would think about giving us a like, a share, or hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it, thank you. Now that the top is closed, I'm just going in across the side and up through the bottom, and that's gonna be my first one there. And then now directly across it, I'm gonna go with the string and I'm gonna go to the back and I'm gonna go back up through the front. So basically, I'm splitting the little pumpkin sack into two halves. So there's one half, two halves, right? And then now I'm going to make quarters. So I'm going to split the halves again to make two quarters on this side here, going all the way around to the back up to, through the front. And now I'm going to go to the other side and make two quarters as well, coming back through the front here. And now I have four quarters all together. And now I'm going to split the quarters again so that I can get eighths and so that would be two eighths when we're finished it's not quite yet but there's two there now and then I'm going to go over here to the other side and I'm going to split those into two so now we have four little eighths here that we're making And now I'm going to go into this other quarter here and I'm going to split it as well. And then I only have one more quarter here and I'm going to go in through the back here as well, up through the front. And now I have eight eighths. And here's a little pumpkin coming together and I like to go back in to the other side where my other string that I left was there. And I like to go ahead and just kind of tie it down, tie a few knots, that way it's nice and secure and the string stays into place. And you can tie it off however you guys like to do it. This is just how we like to do it. I like it to be a little extra secure. And then once the pumpkin is all done, I like to go ahead and just sew in the ends to the pumpkin. To make the stem, we're going to be using this five millimeter crochet hook, and we're just going to go ahead and make our first little loop here for our chain stitches, and then we're going to go 10 chains. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and then we're gonna go into the second one here in our chain and we're gonna single crochet so there's two loops we're gonna pull through for a single crochet and then we're gonna go into that next stitch right next to it and when we're doing this single crochets we want to go ahead and do them pretty tight 
because we're going to use the tightness of the single crochets and the chain to cause the stem to curl naturally. And so we're just going to go across doing single crochets all the way across. And you'll start to see as you're doing them that it will curl naturally. It has just kind of a natural tendency to curl up. And it doesn't take too long because it's really only nine single crochets all together. And then when you get to the last one here, we're just going to go ahead and pull it all the way through. I'm gonna cut this off here and then pull that all the way through. And then that is our little stem and you just attach it to the pumpkin and that's how you make them. And you're gonna need about 12 pumpkins per side. So it'll be 24 pumpkins all together. We hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video on how we made our pumpkin checkers board. Um, the kids are already playing a game and enjoying it and we hope you guys have enjoyed it and will have some fun out of it. We appreciate all the kind comments that you guys leave and the thumbs up and likes, they give us a lot of encouragement.